Hello everyone, welcome to BA Consulting Pro. This is another video on Power BI and in this video we are going to discuss about Power BI Premium. Many of you have asked me earlier to make a video on Power BI Premium, its workspaces, what are the vehicles, etc. So this is the time when I'm gonna make a video on this and in this today's video we are gonna discuss about what is Power BI Premium, what is Power BI Premium Gen 2, what are the differences between premium gen 1 versus gen 2 and also how you can purchase it what are the power bill premium pricing etc so you will get to know everything in this video stay tuned with me till the end of this video so let's discuss what is power bill premium many of us have heard about it a lot about the Power BI Premium and I'm sure many of you already know what is Power BI Premium. But let's explore this further. You can use Power BI Premium to access features and capabilities only available in Premium and offer greater scale and performance for Power BI content in your organization. Power BI Premium enables more users in your organization to get the most out of Power BI with better performance and responsiveness. For example, with Power BI Premium, you and your organization users get a lot of new functionalities and capabilities. Let's discuss what are those capabilities. With Power BI Premium, you will get greater scale and performance for your Power BI reports. That means, as compared to Power BI Pro, you will get enhanced scale and performance. Secondly, you will get a flexibility to license by capacity. Here we are not gonna get licensed by user, it is licensed by capacity. That means we can add as many as users to the Power BI Premium workspaces without any other license requirement. Apart from that, you will get best-in-class features for data visualization and insight extraction such as AI-driven analysis, composable and reusable data flows, as well as paginated reports. You will also get unified cell service and enterprise BI with a variety of premium-only capabilities that support heavier workloads and require enterprise scale. In Power BI Premium, you will get built-in license to extend on-premise with Power BI Report Server. You don't need to purchase a separate license if your organization is looking to establish a Power BI on-premise services. So you will get with this Power BI Premium itself. It will support for data residency by region that is multi-geo and customer managed encryption keys for data at rest that is bring your own key. Also, in Power BI Premium, you will get ability to share Power BI content with anyone, even outside your organization without purchasing a per-user license, which I just explained to you. Now let's move forward. Here is the pricing for Power BI Premium. So if you are going for Power BI Premium per user, you have to get it at a cost of $20 per month, and this cost is in USD. And if you are going per capacity, you have to pay 4995 per capacity. But this is just the beginning of the cost in per capacity. There are different tiers and according to that, the cost would get increased. I have already created another video on Power BI Premium per user and what are the difference between these two. If you want to know more about it, please don't forget to check link in the description section. Now let's see what is Power BI Premium Generation 2, which is currently in preview. Power BI Premium recently released a new version of Power BI Premium, Power BI Premium Generation 2, referred to as Power BI Premium Gen 2 for convenience. You can select to use the original version of Premium or switch to using Premium Gen 2. You can only use one or the other for your premium capacity. Power BI Premium Gen 2 provides a lot of new features. The very first is ability to license premium per user in addition to by capacity. 
Secondly, enhanced performance on any capacity size, anytime. Analytics operations run up to 16 times faster on Power BI Premium Gen 2 operations. On Power BI Premium Gen 2, operations will always perform at top speed and won't slow down when the load on the capacity approaches the capacity limit. So that's a very big enhancement as compared to Power BI Premium Gen 1. Thirdly, greater scale. Now, no limit on refresh concurrency, no longer requiring you to track schedule for data sets being refreshed on your capacity. So you no need to worry about that. It's automatically gonna handle at the Power BI end. Also, you will get fewer memory restrictions as compared to Power BI Premium Gen 1. And lastly, in this point, you will get complete separation between report interaction and schedule refresh. That means while you are interacting with your report and even your data set is getting refreshed, there won't be any impact on each other. So both processes are completely separate now. Now let's talk about improved metrics. Improved metrics with clear and normalized capacity utilization data that's dependent only on the complexity of analytics operations the capacity performs and not on its size. The level of load on the system while performing analytics or the other factors. With the improved metrics, utilization analysis, budget planning, chargebacks, and the need to upgrade are clearly visible with built-in reporting. So inside that metrics, you can see everything related to your Power BI, whether it's a budget planning or chargebacks or utilization analysis. Autoscale allows for automatically adding one vCore at a time for 24 hour periods when the load on the capacity exceeds its limit. Preventing slowdowns caused by overload. So that means whenever your load is increasing, then Microsoft Power BI automatically add one week core for 24 hours so that load can be managed more efficiently. You don't need to do anything manually over here. V cores are automatically removed when idle time is selected. V cores are automatically removed when idle time is detected. Additional vCores are changed to your Azure subscription on pay-as-you-go basis. And there are certain more steps to configure your auto scale. So for that, I'm going to provide you a link in the description. And if you have any question regarding that, you can ask me. Lastly, it's the reduced management overhead. Reduced management overhead with proactive and configurable admin notification about capacity utilization level and load increasing. So these are the main features of Power BI Premium Gen 2. If you have any question regarding any of these, you can leave your comment in the comment section and definitely we will reach out to you ASAP. Now let's see how you can enable Power BI Premium Gen 2. As you can see on my screen right now, if you have to enable the Power BI Premium Gen 2, for that, first you have to go to the admin portal and navigate to the capacity settings. So you have to go over there and you have to navigate to the capacity settings. Then under that, you will get an option of Power BI Premium. Once you will go there, you have to select that. And then if you have already allocated capacity, then you need to just select it again. After that, a section appears titled Power BI Premium Generation 2 Preview, as you can see on my screen right now. And in that section is a slider to enable Premium Gen 2 Preview. You just need to enable it over there. And here you go. So that's all you need to do to enable Power BI Premium Gen 2 on your system or in your Power BI service. Now let's discuss the limitations in Premium Gen 2. The very first is Premium Gen 2 capacity utilization cannot be tracked in the Matrix app. So for those who don't know what is Matrix app, it's a part of the Power BI admin. And in that one, you can navigate to the metrics in your Power BI admin portal and there you will get all the metrics related to your Power BI service. And Power BI Premium Gen 2 capacity utilization cannot be tracked via that metrics. 
Premium Gen 2 does not support customer managed encryption keys for data at rest. And if you would like to know more about that, I'll provide you a link in the description section. So please don't forget to go and check that. If you are using XMLA on Premium Gen 2, that means XMLA endpoint connectivities, make sure you are using the most recent version of the data modeling and management tools. So there are different data modeling and management tools like SSMS, SQL Server Management Studio, it's one of them. So always keep an updated version of that into your system. Analysis service features in Premium Gen 2 are only supported on the latest client libraries, not on the older versions. So you have to always keep your library updated. Estimated release dates for dependent tools to support these requirements would be somewhere like, for example, SQL Server Management Studio. You need a minimum version of 18.8. .8. For SQL Server Data Tools, you need 2.9.15. And for PowerShell, it should be greater than 21.1.18229. So always keep your client libraries latest and updated one while working with Power BI Premium Gen 2. Lastly, there are some memory restrictions which are different in Premium Gen 2 and Embedded Gen 2 as compared to Gen 1. In the first generation of Premium, an embedded memory was restricted to a limited amount of RAM used by all artifacts simultaneously running. In Gen 2, there is no memory limit for the capacity as a whole. Instead, individual artifacts such as your data flows, paginated reports, or data sets are subject to the RAM limitations, which I'm going to show in my next slide. Here, you can see all the limitations over here that are depends on your RAM. For example, we have ASQs or we have the PSQs. Like EM means embedded one. So A1, A2, A3 generally we use for the embedded capacities and P1, P2, P3 we use in the Power BI Premium. And here you can also see what are the backend cores and what are the CPU time for each of these and what are the size of the cores. So these are the limitations. Maximum you can go up to this point only. But you should also remember that the Premium Gen 2 app doesn't currently expose these metrics as I mentioned a while ago. Now let's discuss about the subscription and licensing. A while ago, I discussed the starting point for Power BI Premium. So which is going to start at 4,995 USD per capacity. We are not talking about Power BI Premium per user over here, which is going to be 20 USD per month per user. So if you want to get this Power BI Premium per capacity license, you should have Microsoft 365 subscription account. Power BI Premium is a tenant level Microsoft 365 subscription available in two stock keeping units or SQUs. The very first is PSQs, that means P1 to P5 for embedding and enterprise features requiring a monthly or yearly commitment build monthly and includes a license to install Power BI report server on premise. You don't need to buy separate license with SQL server for the Microsoft Power BI on premise report server. You will get inside it only. You will get with Power BI premium only. Second one is EMSQs. Second one is EMSQs. That is from EM1 to EM3. For organization embedding, requiring a yearly commitment, build monthly, EM1 and EM2 SKUs are available only through volume licensing plans. You can purchase them directly. Now, after discussing this, I was thinking how you are going to purchase this. Basically, what are the different steps that you need to take to purchase this licensing? So let's have a look over there too. As you can see on my screen, you should have first of all the Microsoft 365 admin center and you should be a global admin or the admin to buy this licensing with a certain permissions. So you have to go on step first as you can see the topmost 
image on my screen and there you have to click on admin once you will click on admin then you will go into the billings part and on the billings you will get the step 2 where you will get power bi premium p1 month to month or another one as well just power bi premium p1 so you have to select the details part if you want to get or according to that you have to buy from there and once you will get it you will get the step 3 that is you have purchased power bi premium p1 so that's all you need to do for your more information i'll also provide a link in the description where you can go and you can check this in more detail in my upcoming video that is the next week one i'm gonna discuss about reserve capacities capacity nodes and capacity workload what are the difference what are the points you should consider about these and also i'll specifically gonna discuss about what is vico because many of you have asked me earlier what is vico how to decide etc so we are gonna discuss everything about it in our upcoming video get in touch you can reach out to us through our website or through email or via different social networks please don't forget to subscribe our channel like this video and hit the bell icon for the latest updates